All right, fruit lovers, this is Ross. Today's video, we are talking about growing citrus in colder climates. I'm here in zone 7A in the Philadelphia area, and I have two citrus trees here that should produce really high quality fruit in the ground here in this climate. Now, this is still obviously an experiment. These are trees I have just planted. The hardiness rating of these trees is um, unfortunately really not well known. I have read a lot of conflicting information. And if you ever are concerned about will a tree survive in your area, the best thing to do is just plant it. Plant it and find out for yourself. You know, It's amazing what you can grow if you can push the limits. Even just give these trees and perennials that you plant a little bit of extra help. You'd be surprised what you can grow in your zone and how far you can push it. So citrus in zone seven is not really a thing. This is a yuzu. It's supposed to be rated down to about five degrees Fahrenheit. I've read 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I've read zero degrees Fahrenheit. And this is also a sudachi, very closely related to the yuzu, um, which could also be similar hardiness. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, even if I, I heard, I did read this, that even if the yuzu gets knocked back by the cold and a lot of the branches die, if you just pile up a lot of wood chips here around the trunk, that's enough to give it winter protection and it will always re-sprout from that, that protection down there, whatever is below and encased in those wood chips, similar to how I protect my fig trees here in zone seven. And then it will re-sprout and actually fruit in the length of that growing season, which I just find to be incredible. I don't know of too many other plants that you could say are have that ability. There's the fig that can do that, of course. Uh, it does struggle in that regard. There are other fruiting plants, certainly, that you could say will fruit from dieback. But if that's the case, well, then this is an incredibly tasty piece of citrus. This is like you've never had yuzu before, you're missing out. It's seriously uh, one of the best tasting pieces of citrus that, I, that you can eat and cook with. Now, you're not gonna eat it fresh. You're gonna put it in drinks, cocktails, hot sauce, uh, on your food and cooking in general as a garnish. I think you can also cook with it at the same time, although I typically would love to put it just as a finisher on sushi or any kind of fish. Um, it's just really, in my opinion, uh, a really incredible piece of fruit. Now, sudachi, on the other hand, is much smaller. You harvest them when they're green. Now, last year I had a huge crop of these in the container that it was in. It was in a three or five gallon pot. Um, and the sudachi, uh, I actually ended up letting them fully ripen, harvested them and candied them into a, uh, a candied, um, Really the whole thing got candied. And so I was able to, I originally wanted just the skin, to candy the skin, add that to rice. I know a lot of cultures uh, typically have done that in their cuisine. But this is another type of citrus that apparently is really good on fish as well. As much, most citrus is that you guys probably are aware. Lemons, limes are classic on fish. But certainly I heard that uh, sudachi is not necessarily overpowering. and. It, it's supposed to enhance the flavors of what you're eating. Whereas yuzu is more, I heard, intense and kind of overpowers other flavors. So interesting, I haven't used sudachi, even though I had so many of them last year, probably I had close to 50 sudachi on this little tree. It's been pruned back quite a bit, but I'll do the same thing on this tree. I may even bend some of these branches and just pile wood chips um, on top of them. So bend them really close to the ground, remove these stakes and cover them. And that's the easiest way, I think, to protect any, any fruiting plant. The wood chips uh, have enough air in them throughout the winter time that it's not gonna rot the bark. You uncover everything after frost, maybe even a little bit before frost. Um, cover this certainly when the temperatures are gonna get probably in the 20s maybe 15. I am curious to see, I'll probably leave a portion of this unprotected. Of course, this whole yuzu will be unprotected and we'll just see what happens, you know? So these are two citrus here that I'm growing, again, in the Philadelphia area that uh, I'm hoping I can see success with. 
um, and I hope that you guys also will be willing to try this, see if it works in your area, report back, and we'll be able to compare and um, maybe we'll have some really hearty citrus that actually tastes good. That's the, the thing that I think most people are unaware. You can actually grow some citrus varieties like Flying, flying Dragon uh, in the ground here in the Philadelphia area or in Zone 7s, but uh, the plants are very thorny, <laughs> very difficult to deal with, and the eating quality is very poor. So they're actually trying to breed that and improve the flavor of that Flying Dragon. And uh, you know maybe we'll get something out of that, but in the meantime, this seems like a decent compromise and just see what we can do with it. So thanks guys for watching. If you want to see more on this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Definitely be updating you guys in the future on it. All right, take care.